I'm Jenny Reese, turf writer for the Courier Journal. I want to talk to you about a couple of the, these really fantastic races in this Breeders' Cup Friday and Saturday at Churchill Downs. Uh, I covered the first Breeders' Cup in 1988 here, and I remember looking at the entries those days and thinking, this is the most unbelievable collection of horses maybe ever, definitely at, at Churchill Downs. It, it's hard to compare this group because it's, there's only seven races back there. There's 14 now, so some of the races maybe have been diluted, but you look at them, they're all terrific. I'm really looking forward to this classic. Uh, just You couldn't get a better script than having Zenyatta with her uh, 20th race on the line, trying to be unbeaten, coming in and taking on a very good group of dirt horses in this classic. And um, I do have an opinion in this race. I kind of feel like I'm being, um, uh, you know, unloyal, but... I think there's going to be someone to blame to end Zenyatta's winning streak, and I think it is blame. I've just been a fan of this horse. He won this, uh, the Clark Handicap here at Churchill Downs in the fall and the Stephen Foster this spring. He's going to have the jump on Zenyatta, and I think he's going to be tough to run down. And if she does, she is one of the really all-time greats. She's already one of the all-time greats. I do, just as an aside, like what Shug McGay said about her, that it's hard to compare these horses with different eras. But one thing we can say about Zenyatta is she's got the greatest record in American racing history, whether she wins this race or not, no horse has won its first 19 races against top company like she has. Uh, so I do think Blame is going to be the one to beat. And I have a feeling that Quality Road or Haynesfield, one of them's going to be in the, the uh, trifecta somewhere. Haynesfield's look excellent. I, I really don't have an opinion which one. And I think Zenyatta's going to be certainly, you know, in the top three, which would be a great thing. The ladies classic doesn't have the marquee horse because the marquee girls are racing against the boys this year, but it's a very good race. And we do have blind luck, the Kentucky Oaks winner coming back here. And she is just always in the, the, the hunt with races. She always seems like she's in a photo finish, win or lose, usually she wins. I think she's gonna be very tough in there. I also like Unrivaled Belle, just have a feeling uh, sometimes handicapping trainers as much as the horses, but Vilmot has seemed very thrilled with how she's doing. This is the horse, Unrivaled Belle, that beat Rachel Alexander on the Kentucky Oaks card. And I think she'll appreciate the two turns here. Um, and I also think Harvey de Gras, another three-year-old filly in the Ladies Classic, will be tough. And I think Acoma, or Acoma, I guess it's really um, pronounced, at 20 to one in the line offers a lot of value and she loves this track. Just a couple of other races, like everybody, I'm looking very greatly forward to seeing if Goldakova can win the mile for a third straight year, but I think there's another mare in there that has a chance to beat her and that's Proviso. Uh, she ran very well at Keeneland in her last race. Um, a, a fun race is gonna be the turf sprint. It, you've got a lot of speed in it. It's five furlongs, short run into the turn. I had a real strong opinion about Chamberlain Bridge. I still like them in there, uh, but I know that they wanted to draw outside and he drew the rail, but that's gonna be fireworks in that race. So we'll have all kinds of updates at CourierJournal.com. 